everybody, it's John Lake Erie Chestnuts. Haven't shown you the indoor growing room for a little while, so I thought I'd show you a little peek. So I fasten this with pins at the bottom to keep the cats from sneaking in from the bottom. And we've got a lot of green in here. So I'll walk you around uh, here in a second, but I wanted to talk about a couple things. One is I started some chestnuts this year in cone containers. Um, I think they, they're SC 10s maybe. They're like nine, eight or nine inches deep. And uh, you can see here what that looks like. Here you can see the roots coming out of the bottom. Um, but that's from some moisture underneath the container. But I started those chestnuts. I've done oaks and they've done well, which is a broader leaf, smaller than the chestnut leaf. But after about a month and a half, I decided they weren't showing any signs of problems yet, but they were definitely, I feel like max capacity. So I can show you a picture or two of some roots. So over the past day, couple days, I rooted up 50 or 60, uh, potted them up into a bigger size pot. And this is the pot I chose. These are, uh, I always confuse. I believe these are called tree pots. The tree pots are the square ones. The D pots are the round ones. So the tree pots, the three by eights, and I potted each of them up into those. Now, many of these will be sold at the end of this month or the beginning of next month after they harden off. And these were out for about a week, but then we got really cold, low temps, 35, 34. I've seen some snowflakes, so I'm just not gonna let all my work go bad. But you can see they all look good. You know, overall for indoor trees, this is about the best you can hope for. You know, unless you're a professional growing like a pot operation, which I'm not. But you can see how healthy these things look. Very beautiful. Now, will they expand their roots completely before they get sold? Not necessarily. There may be some soil at the bottom that's not used. But, you know, they have eight inches worth of root. And then I just filtered, held it steady like this. And then with the other hand, poured dirt along the edges and then packed it in and then watered them in thoroughly. And so most of these were done a few days ago and then I did about 10 more to finish up today. We'll move on to what else we have going. We're gonna sell some hazelnuts this year, some of which we're gonna plant. And what I've decided to do is put them in these small little vegetable containers because they're only gonna be in those for less than a month of which a week or two will be sprouting. And what I did was four Yam Hill and four Jefferson. And I'm gonna sell them as a group, only sell them as a group. I'm not gonna sell them as individuals. So you can see, uh, you know, I just potted these up today, but they were, you know, definitely raring to go, many of them. The rest, you know, aren't quite ready. And so I just put them back in the fridge. And then over here, I put some Jefferson in this row. And then here is Carpathian Walnut that I had purchased seed from Burnt Ridge Nursery in Washington State. Now here's some spindly looking English white oaks that will recover just fine. But what happened is I knew that the chestnuts would have issues with their big broad leaf uh, blocking each other out. So what I did was sneak in between them every other row or every other, I would have a chestnut, then an oak chestnut, thinking the oaks would be able to sneak up in there, and that's what they were doing. You can see they're kind of light green. They've already improved significantly over the past couple of days. And of course, some uh, came up nicely right here, you can see. Uh, but others were struggling, you know, sent up multiple stems. Now this one will recover. Uh, you can see right here, it's already sending up three little 
uh, buds and it will take over and they just really recover well as long as you do this at a young age. So not ideal, but not bad. And you know, oaks love that tap root and so they really like the cone tainer. Get it really good. And so I planted up a few more English white oak. I have some more nuts that have roots. These things have tap roots of six, seven inches right now. And again, I just hold it steady and filter soil down and tap it until it comes around, it packs around, then water them in. Now here's some oaks that are doing just fine. This was a container tray. The trays are really sturdy. They hold 98. You can move them easily in and outdoors. And uh, those tree pots that I have also will have uh, holders that hold 25 of them at a time. They're a little more expensive and they're on back order. So I should get those in the next week or two. And all, many of these trees will go outside uh, next, this coming Thursday. This is a Monday. To continue my display here, here you can see hazelnut. These are really unique. The leaf is very soft compared to the more waxy leaf of a chestnut. This one is a Jefferson hazelnut. Looking really healthy. And you can see my experiment with all of these chestnuts that were sitting here were uh, damping off. They damped off and I subjected them to the dry treatment. And the, I'm getting better and better every year. I would say if I just completely shut off watering, I have not tried the cinnamon that many of you recommended because I've been having great success this year just by drying them. I'm not going to say 100%, but I'm going to say at least 60% success on getting trees. You can see leaves that are healthy growing out here. Now, that's not to say everything. So I don't water them until they get a full, healthy, expanded leaf. You see this one? Uh, you know, it's trying. It just isn't there yet. You know, it's got, let me bring my hand here to get it to focus. Uh, but you can see the leaf isn't fully expanded. It's sending down another one. My hand looks ridiculous in here. That's not what it really looks like. But uh, this plant, I am forcing to be very dry, you know, and, and it'll either survive or it won't. I mean, this is dr pretty dry, but you know, and you can see here, this one accidentally got watered uh, because it's just close to ones that are doing well. But you can see some that were just doing terribly. You know, this guy, for example, had multiple, let me get it to focus here, multiple stems. And you can see them, they're blackened off but it sent up two stems to do well. And so what I'm doing, normally I would trim one of those stems early, but because this tree was stressed when it started, I'm letting them both grow up and then eventually I'll cut one of those off. You can see this one is recovering, but it's not perfect. So I did water this one. The leaf, once it gets looking about like that, I feel like I can water it. You can see, now I don't know if it's too early, it may just wilt back, but it seems successful. Some more hazelnuts, look how good those look. Aren't they beautiful? Just beautiful. Now I threw a few vegetables in there. There's some tomatoes and marigolds and peppers. It's funny, the peppers are actually blooming. They're just kind of all in one tray. And then this are different varieties of chestnuts. Um, Jersey Jim and Hong Kong. And these don't quite grow quite as tall because they're under a little better light. And I've talked about this light before. The hydro planet light has much more heat that comes off of it. I have to keep the light much farther off. You can see there's at least 18 inches from the tops. Whereas the fluorescence, I keep them, you know, six inches or no, no farther than six inches away from the tops. But this one, if you put them any closer, they're gonna burn. They'll get a little struggling from that. So a lot of beautiful green. Well, I hope you found that little review of what we're doing here enjoyable. 
I'm certainly having fun doing it. It is a lot of work. I mean, I potted up 70 more plants today. It took me a couple hours. Uh, you know, I still have several seeds more to go, but eventually within the next week, these will start going outside and all I'll have to really do is focus on keeping them watered. And then, you know, if there's an occasional rain, then that takes that piece of the work out for me too. And we'll talk more about that hardening off process as I go into it. But I hope to have many of these trees ready to go by Memorial Day as long as it warms up appropriately. If it stays cold like this, it may be the 1st of June. Anyway, thanks for following me here at Lake Erie Chestnuts. Get out there and grow something. Remember, if you're not growing, you're dying.